Hey, what's up guys? This is Val Cameron from Dreamlight. I'm a best-selling published artist at das 3 d and I've been teaching 3D art for over a decade. In today's video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how you can add a realistic-looking 3D film model to your photos and create the exact same image we are looking at right now. So, we're going to be using the free Dash Studio 3D software from das 3 d with a little help from Photoshop. All right, so here I am at pixabay.com, a great place to find free photos online. And obviously there's a lot of ways to match and, and combine 3D models with photos. And I cannot explain them all in this video. So what we're gonna do is focus on the fastest and most fun way so we can get started right away. So when choosing photos, it's crucial that you choose lighting that is soft because that is the most easy way to match okay so very soft lighting so here at pixabay i've chosen sunset beach at, uh, as my search parameters and i'm gonna go ahead and locate a photo all right so let's scroll here and pick this one and i'm going to show you one thing that not many people are aware of and that's when you download these these actually differ with the information provided in the file. So if you download a scaled image, rescaled image, any size other than the original, let's do that. Let's now also download the full image size. All right, and let me now check the folder. You can see that if you go to the scaled image, right click on it and look at the properties, there is no EXIF data here, right? No camera data. But if you look at the original image, unscaled, and go back here, you see that there is additional camera data included. And this is only available for, obviously, for some of the images and also only on the original unscaled image, okay? And this can be useful because it says what kind of focal length that was used at the time of the photo shoot, right? And we're going to double this amount in the software in a moment. All right, so before going into Dash Studio and doing the actual adding of the model, I'm going to just quickly prepare the photos. And what I'm going to do is, all right, so I'm going to take the rescale image here, load it. And I'm going to note the settings. I'm going to choose size and write down the pixel count. So this is 1920 times 1280. And this is important so we get the same screen proportions and screen ratio inside Dash Studio in a moment. Now we're going to be using this JPEG as a backdrop. And for the lighting, to match the lighting, we're going to create a very quick and fake HDR map. So I'm going to just change the mode to 32-bit per channel. And I'm going to quickly go ahead and save it as an HDR image. So I'm going to just change to HDR and just save it as is. Now, this is not a real HDR map. And partially why I chose soft lighting is that there is no harsh light and shadows in here. And when we use this fake HDR model, so to speak, we kind of get a very good representation when using the HDR image, even though we don't have any sharp lighting in it because there, there is none here in this photo, right? Like I said, there is a lot of more options if you want to go with sharp lighting and all of that, but I don't want to go into that right now. Let's keep things simple and fun, all right? So here we are inside Dash Studio, and this is a full-blown, full-feature 3D application. Now, I've been using this software since 2005. It's just amazing. And one of the reasons I started using it is because they have these amazing 3D female models. Male models also, obviously. Now, let's get started, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is add the photo to our background. So I'm going to go to Paints and Environment. And in here, choose Type and Backdrop. Now on this little triangle here, I'm going to click there, click on Browse. And I'm going to pick the JPEG version of the background, okay? Next, I'm going to close this window and go to the Environment tab. And I'm going to click here on the Environment map and click on Browse. And in here, we want to use the HDR or the fake HDR version of our image. Now, when I click on Draw Dome Off, so we don't want to draw any dome 
we just want to use the photo as a background, the JPEG, okay, and use the HDR as lighting. Next, we're going to set the proportions. Remember, I wrote this down uh, 1920 times 1280. So let's disable screen proportions so we can enter the values in here. Um, let's choose uh, custom and let's uh, select 1920 times 1280. So this ensures we have the exact same screen proportions. Now we can lock the proportions and after it's locked, we can also you know, rescale the actual render size or final image size. So next, I'm going to add a camera. There we go. And the EXIF data, if you remember when we looked at the original photo, which is over here and properties here, it says that the camera had 10 millimeter focal length. And that is a little bit low. Obviously, it's kind of like a wide angle shot, all right? But I'm going to use double that amount. So I'm going to go in here and choose focal length 20. And this we might adjust along this video so that it kind of, you know, after all, we are after that it looks realistic. Not always should we just follow the numbers blindly, right? In the end, it's after what looks good. So this is just the base number over here. All right, so next we're going to load our female model. So I'm going to go to content library and I'm going to locate here in my people folder, Genesis 8 female. Now I have a lot of characters in here. I just love these. They are so gorgeous. They look just amazing. And by the way, they are using Hollywood, right? They are so incredibly useful and with the joints and animation, all that. So they are used actually in Hollywood during, during previews. Now, I'm going to go and select Brilliana here, okay? So I'm going to just load her, double click. And these models load without any additional clothing or hair or, or shoes or outfits for that matter, right? So what we're going to do is simply go in here, click on the model in our scene tab, go back, and I'm going to put some... First of all, iRay material. So Dash Studio uses the iRay render engine, which is awesome. Some simple makeup options. So we can just choose, let's pick this one. Looks pretty cool. Kind of like crying eyes. I just love this. Uh, very cool, very nice. All right, so next I'm gonna add some clothing to her. So I'm gonna click on clothing and I'm gonna pick a Let's see here, I'm going to pick, so as far as clothing goes, there are items that are like quickly conforming, basically conforming the body, but not really sticky draping. And there are also objects called deforce D4, objects that are indeed being calculated as dynamic outfits that really drape along the body and have weight to them, gravity. So I'm going to use one of those called Deforce Wet and Dry Classic Dress. And I'm going to click on one of these. Having my brilliant model selected, I'm going to pick the wet classic dress with this particular look and feel. And also there is a shape preset. And in order to apply that, I'm going to go in here and locate the dress and go back and apply the wet shape preset. Now, she already also loads with shoes, which is just awesome. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is go and select Brilliana again. I'm gonna go back here and choose hair. And we're gonna pick something that looks cool here. I'm gonna do Caprice hair, looks pretty amazing. Let's load that, double click. And once the hair is loaded, I'm going to click on the hair within the figure so we can expand its properties here or content, right? Added. So I'm going to click on the Caprice hair, go back and choose a material preset. So apply first. And I'm going to choose a color. And I'm going to pick something as a contrast to the sky or maybe a blue matching the sky. 
That looks pretty awesome. This one looks cool. I'm gonna go with this light pink, it looks amazing. All right, now we are gonna add, first I'm gonna switch to my camera. And basic, you know, camera thoughts about, you know, matching the scene is to match the height to start with. Obviously the camera is quite low, almost on the, on the ground here. So we can also select the camera in the scene tab and just say, hey, I wanna have the camera around, let's say half meter up above the ground level. So 50 is half a meter above. Then we can right click here and angle it up or down. So we match the horizon. And with that, just a quick rough estimation of the camera, right? Now we wanna add a pose to our female character. So I'm gonna select her here in the scene tab, go back to the content and choose poses. So I'm gonna switch to elegant and essential. And I'm gonna try, let's see if we can maybe use this one, all right. Let's see if that would be possible to match. And I'm also gonna rotate her. So I'm gonna go back to my scene tab, rotate her on the Y axis. All right, and now I can also move her closer to the camera. And I just wanna position her somewhere around here. Well, I kind of dislike that pose. It doesn't really fit the image. I'm gonna go with something else. I'm gonna see how a different pose performs. I'm gonna try this one here. Awesome, and now I'm gonna adjust her position again. See how she would look here instead. Yeah, I think she looks perfectly there. So I'm gonna back her off a little bit from the camera and just put her around here. And in this case, I wouldn't probably not use the, the heels anyway. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and remove the heels from the scene. So they're called wet dress shoes and just remove them, all right? There is a place for heels. This is probably not one of them, right? All right, so having this done now, I'm gonna go back to the environment. I'm gonna make sure the ground is drawn. We need to draw the ground in order for the photo to capture shadows from our model. I'm gonna set the ground position mode to auto so that it automatically figures out where the height of the model is, where she's touching the ground. So now if we switch over to NVIDIA Array Preview, one thing I'm just gonna change is go back to the camera and turn off the headlamp. This is kind of like a working light. You don't wanna have that in the final image. And now I'm just gonna wait for NVIDIA Array to initiate. And what we can do at this stage, there are several things we can add here. First of all, we can rotate the dome. And the dome is simply the HDR map or photo we create in Photoshop, this one, right? We can rotate it to see how lighting changes. Obviously, there's a little more orange on this side, a bit more blue on this side. And I like the orange to be kind of behind her. Right now, it kind of feels like the orange is coming straight at her, right? So we want to kind of match what's going on lighting-wise. So I'm going to enter 180 at dome rotation to see if the blue can be more dominant from the front. And it is right now, right? We have more blue going on. And we have just a tad of orange coming here from the left side, which I think looks pretty good, right? We can try to rotate this maybe to 190, see if we can get a little bit less of the orange. All right. Now, what we also can do here is obviously go to tone mapping and adjust a few of the settings here to match the contrast of the photo, right? So white point is something you can use to either have a colder tone on the lighting or a warmer tint if you need or prefer that. So you can choose blue tone. It's like white balance, right? On the camera to uh, match the photo. But I just found that when matching using this, this specific technique we have chosen right now, Going with the white is, in most cases, the best uh, because the colors match very closely. 
What we can do though is adjust the film ISO, right? This is like the intensity of the old school film rolls back in the 80s, right? And you can just go ahead and increase that to increase the overall lighting if you need to. Depends on what kind of model you're using, if she has darker skin or what kind of outfit she wears and all that. Also at the bottom here, we can adjust, for instance, crush blacks to get a more contrast rich image, a more darker contrast. So that's something we can play with to get her to match the black tones found here in the photo. But often as, you, as we do that, we kind of get a darker overall image. So we can also use burn highlights to exaggerate how harsh the white really punches in the image. And I think we need to have a little more of that to match the really nice highlights we find in the photo here, right? So overall, I think this looks pretty good. However, she kind of feels a little bit distorted, right? And that has to do with the very low chosen camera angle. So what I'm going to do is increase this to 40. And I know the photo wasn't really at that, you know, range. But again, we have to go after what looks good. And this is something I teach, I've been teaching for over a decade. In the end, it's after what looks good, not what's realistic or what really is in the image, right? So I'm going to move her now back a little bit more so that she again ends up in the frame. And I'm going to lower her also a little bit more down here and scale her a little bit. I want her to be a little bit larger in the frame. So I'm going to choose Brilliana and I'm going to scale her to 150 so that she fills the frame a little bit more you can also move the camera i mean you won't move the photo because it's static but you can move the camera right click and just move the camera and with that you will kind of adjust her and move her and what we can do now is simply scale her down a little bit to maybe 125 and that will be our final size so as you can see, it's nothing difficult. We are simply toying a little bit with you know, placement, size, angles and all that. And it just matches very quickly and looks very nice. So there's a lot more adjustments you can make inside that studio. You can you know, tweak the surfaces of the hair to make it more responsive to the light. You can apply wet skin and all that. And there is, you know, a limited amount of adjustments you can make. You can play with additional lights. And I cover more about that in a very specific training that I've created called 3D Finger Art Club, where I teach all the techniques available inside the studio, specifically for female 3D art. But right now, the next step is I'm just going to click on Windows and go to Simulation Settings. And this is where we gonna select the dress so that it drapes realistically around our model i'm just gonna start with start bones from memorize pose off and click on simulate this will add weight and pull the dress down realistically with gravity and all that so while this is calculating i'm going to just pause the video perfect now this is completed i'm going to turn this off i'm just waiting for the display to engage here with maybe the array preview and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit more highlights to the hair so i'm going to go and click on the hair i'm going to go into surfaces and here you got the different options like the bangs the cap front side and all that i'm going to select them all and i'm going to go ahead and select here adjust glossy roughness down a little bit so it projects more hash browns, individual hash browns. And also here at the bottom, I'm going to select top coat weight a little bit more. Lower the roughness of the top coat. And as you can see, there is a lot of options here. You can really go nuts here and have fun and select all kinds of parameters. I'm not going to do that right now. So we are ready to create the final image or render. And I'm going to go ahead and choose progressive rendering. I'm going to choose quality three. 
I'm gonna use 15,000 samples and I'm gonna just choose the desired size and click on, I'm gonna save my scene, click on render. This will now create the final image. And I'm just gonna take it for a quick spin inside Photoshop and apply a very basic post working there. So I'm gonna see you in a second. I'm just gonna pause the video while this is rendering and I'll see you in Photoshop in a while. All right, so the render is finished. I'm gonna load it into Photoshop. And in here, what we can do is add additional, I usually do this as a quick post working effect that just enhance the overall image. But this time around, I want to do some additional things. And by the way, there is a little bit more advanced things you can do. You can go into Dash Studio and add a light. Once it's added here, you can just click on it here and select intensity zero and then go to environment and change to scene only and now for the background I'm gonna use I'm just click on none and choose white so this will render a black mask if you will and if you know Photoshop you can use a mask to control different layers and so this is going to create a mask of a black and white image we can just use to control our female model and how she looks compared to the photo. So there's our mask. I don't need to render this in super high quality. I can just go ahead and cancel, close and save last render. And I'm going to call it mask. All right. Now inside Photoshop, what we can do with this is we can duplicate the layer all right i'm going to load the mask so let's do that just add it here and i'm going to use Control a to set all Control c to copy use command on the mac go back here click on the create mask icon alt click here Control v to paste so i'm getting a little bit more technical and advanced here but i just want to show you that you can create a lot of additional changes post in post work right and so now when you control this layer let me alt click here and do adjustments invert now if you control this particular layer you will control the girl itself right herself so you have individual control now and can adjust her so that she really really perfectly matches the extra contrast and usually you want to go after the tones you already have in the photo if there is a lot of black you want to capture that in your model as well and i'll just wash out the brightness a little bit to capture more overall lighting on her so something like that now that we have this adjusted we can go ahead and flatten the image and i'm going to apply camera raw filter and this is my favorite filter in photoshop because it just has so much power in it with these simple sliders right you can add more blue tone i don't like the blue tone here uh she's obviously crying right so we gotta the blue tone kind of emphasizes that and enhances the coldness she's feeling um, you can obviously play with overall exposure and all that and I'll really punch the image if you want to and use high contrast. I personally love high contrast, but in the end, it's about what you want and need for your final image, right? Sometimes too much contrast can ruin the moment or mood as well. So you want to play carefully with these settings so you don't overwhelm the image. Now, very often i also choose a little bit of clarity not so much but that kind of quickly becomes a painted look and feel but just a tad usually just adds a little bit of realism and then you can click here on the lens correction and just add a little bit of vignetting that tones the edges of the image and makes the center pop a little bit more what i'm gonna do next is just because we added our lady to a photo there is no real ground and no sense of weight 
or her body deforming against the surface. So what I'm going to do is create this manually. And I'm simply going to use a very simplistic tool for this, which is the smudge tool, right? And there is a lot of tools you can use for this. The smudge is one of the simplest. And I'm going to use hardness 0 and just strength 25. And just really zoom in here on, on her body and just nudge and just you know add a little bit of sensation of weight of her body actually sinking into the environment so we just very subtle you know deformation of her body all right and that then adds a kind of feel that she slightly deforms and sits on a rough surface that ain't perfectly straight. All right, and that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this short video. And if you like this video, there is a lot more where this came from. I've actually created a full ebook about the five secrets to creating stunning 3D female art using Dash Studio and Photoshop. So this ebook is full of tricks and tips, obviously, and also gorgeous renders by me and our teachers at Dreamlight. And there is a lot of tips inside this ebook about lighting and all the other elements that are so important. All right, so to get this ebook, simply click on the link below this video and fill out your email address and it will be emailed to your inbox. So that's all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead, click the link below, grab the ebook, and I'll see you there.